We were on vacation in Germany in August of 1979. I was with my husband, and we were traveling in a VW van which stalled on a railroad track. We were hit by a train, at which time I suffered traumatic amputations of both of my legs and my right arm. If I was to every morning when I get up, consciously make a decision of whether I want to put my legs on this morning, am I going to enjoy going through the process of putting them on, it would be miserable. That's one of the things you don't allow to have an option for. Eventually I'll look into getting a prosthesis for my arm, but for the first year and a half, the most important thing was to learn to walk and to become mobile again. The one phrase that a lot of people don't like me to say is, well, it cost you an arm and a leg. That makes people feel uneasy. So I've tried to drop that one from my vocabulary. <laughs> if I had only my legs missing, I would be quite mobile even without my prosthesis on. I could get in and out of a wheelchair without very much problem. I could go up and down stairs sitting on my rear end and pulling myself up and down the railings if there were railings on both sides. I can't do that with one arm. Any handicapped person has to project themselves as being as normal as the person they're talking to. Both of us are very independent people. And I think it was the beauty of Linda's independence that was one of the motivating factors behind her working so hard to overcome the dependence that she had to have temporarily. For several months, Dave had to do essentially everything for me, from carrying me from place to place. If we didn't have the wheelchair, we were living in a two-story house, he had to carry me up and down the stairs. He had to take me to the bathroom. That's what you call being physically dependent, and I probably had more difficulty in learning to be graciously dependent, and I'm sure I'm still not always graciously dependent on people. I was very lucky when it came to my job because I had already spent three out of four years in radiology residency, which is something that you can do sitting in a wheelchair if necessary and something that you can do with one hand. It mainly requires eyes and a mind to do radiology. I've been living in Los Angeles for four years before the accident and seeing Dave on the weekends while he was living in San Diego. I've ridden the train because my job is in LA and Dave's job is in San Diego and it's the most convenient form of transportation for me. Very early after the accident, within the first couple of weeks, Linda entertained the idea of a, an operation that would have made having a baby impossible for convenience sake, and I persuaded her otherwise. He, I think, took a lot of, spent a lot of time convincing me that, you know, he still saw me as the same person, and as he told me at one point, he told me that he didn't marry my legs and my arm, and that as far as he was concerned, that didn't make me any less of a, less attractive sexually to him. I think that a lot of people wonder, you know, what goes through a person's mind when you're making love to somebody that is handicapped or when you're a handicapped person, 
and you know whether those kind of things can lead to inhibitions that might cripple a relationship. But we we both found it very easy to overcome the problems. Our relationship was fairly normal, starting at about three or four weeks after the accident. I mean, normal for us might be abnormal for other people. <laughs> Once we decided to go ahead and have the baby, we went through the same pros and cons that any other couple go through that have already chosen a profession and have waited for a while to have children, and that is how is it going to change our lifestyle. And I had to deal with the fact that I was a physically handicapped person and was this child gonna, going to hold that against me at some point in their life. about four and a half hours for labor and delivery. The most amusing or unusual part of it was the fact that I was able to walk into the labor room and uh, deliver with my legs on and my boots on. I'm probably the only person to ever deliver at the Naval Hospital with their boots on. <laughs> I think that if my daughter can grow up to be the kind of person that my wife is, I would be tickled. That would be enough.